What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video and back with another rankings video. We got running backs today and we will hop right into the S tier. Christian McCaffrey, first player in this first tier. Uh, it was a pretty tough look last season for people who try to predict injuries, think that whatever happened in the past is absolutely going to happen in the future. Um, McCaffrey ends up playing 20 games last season, finishes as running back two. Uh, He's just a clear-cut running back one this season. I think the next player we'll talk about is close enough to where if you really wanted to take, it'll be Austin Eckler next. If you really want to take Eckler over McCaffrey, I would be okay with it because, like, you know, the difference between first overall pick and a mid-first round pick, it's not a huge difference. You're probably not going to lose because of that decision, but I would take McCaffrey. Um, just a great offense, a great coaching staff, uh, still in his prime incredibly high weekly floor and ceiling and I know that you can say the same things about Eckler but and I guess we'll bring up Austin Eckler here now that we're talking about him the only reason really that I have uh, McCaffrey there Eckler next is with Eckler we have that addition of Quentin Johnston and when we look at the production for Austin Eckler he definitely does have like a higher target share you know when people are injured when it's like Eckler and only Mike Williams or Eckler and only Keenan Allen, if you have Williams, Allen, Everett, Johnston, all healthy at the same time, McCaffrey is just the better player and we should probably assume full health. And that's even assuming, you know, that like Debo and Ayuk and Kittle are all healthy as well. We just have more confidence in McCaffrey. So it's McCaffrey, then Eckler. Uh, but again, both are awesome. McCaffrey is either the 101 or the 102 in all formats. Uh, I guess unless you're in like a full PPR three wide receiver league, then, you know, those wide receivers will start to get up. But this is half PPR rankings in general. You're taking first or second. I'd probably take Jefferson first. Uh, and then Eckler is somewhere in that like three through five range, just depending on your preference for running back or wide receiver first. After them, only other player in S tier. I am going to put Bijan into this tier. Um, I know some people are very hesitant taking him this early. And I get that, right? Taking a rookie in what we would now be in um, roughly the mid to late first round in general, um, probably just like a little bit after Travis Kelsey goes. People are hesitant taking a rookie that early because we just haven't seen him. Uh, but remember, we have seen him, right? We, we saw him all throughout college. We have seen him play. We know that he's very good. Um, this is not his like first season playing football. It's not like, you know, we're hearing stories of Bijan, but no one's ever seen him play. We've seen him play. Um, also, we can look at rookie production historically for very high-end uh, prospects. Since 2000, there have been 16 running backs drafted with a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. They averaged 250 touches in their rookie year with 31% of them, a very high percentage, having the best season of their career or tied for the best season of their career as a rookie. So if you just randomly selected a year, the rookie season has the highest chance of being a running back's best season if they're a top 10 pick. So it's not that it's like, oh, well, you know, maybe it'll take them a few years to get going. It's like, this actually is the most likely best season you're going to get from Bijan's career. Is it going to be? No, it's just most likely to be the best. And it gives you, you know, a lot more confidence in saying, okay, yeah, I can take him as rookie if, you know, it's very likely he's going to have a good year. Um, and then people also point to Atlanta being bad. Atlanta was 15th in scoring last season. They didn't have Bijan. Pitts was hurt. London was a rookie. Uh, they were using Mariota most of the season. Now they've got Desmond Ritter, who is going to be a slight upgrade. Not a huge upgrade, but a slight upgrade from Mariota. And so a lot of things pointing in that direction. Again, I think McCaffrey, Eckler, Bijan locked in to S tier. A tier. We're going to start things off with Nick Chubb, uh, someone that I highlighted in the League Winners video, just a player that I have a ton of confidence in this season, floor, ceiling, both incredible, best pure runner in the NFL. Um, the offense should be better this season, more consistent. Uh, he's played 12 plus games in all five years of his career. Um, and just with Kareem Hunt going away, I know they're going to use Jerome Ford a little bit in the receiving game. Nick Chubb is still someone they want to get touches to. And even if they end up throwing the ball at a higher rate this season, which I am expecting to happen, they'll just convert some of the carries that Chubb was getting into targets. And then he's just going to get a higher share of the carries, right? If they have, um, let's say in the past, they were going to give their running backs 20 carries. Well, they're not going to give Chubb 20 carries. They're probably going to do it like, I don't know, 22 for Chubb and eight for Kareem Hunt, like in the past, remember. Now, if they dump down to like 24 carries, 
I mean, they're probably still going to give Chubb like 20 of those carries and just have four go to Jerome Ford. And then some of those targets will also go to Chubb. So he's going to end up with very similar touch totals, right? So even if the volume shifts around a little bit, running backs, um, you know, for like carries and targets, same amount of volume is probably going to Nick Chubb. It's just more of them are targets, which is a good thing in fantasy. You want targets instead of carries uh, because it also keeps a running back healthier so reception should go up still gonna have insane touchdown floor he's an awesome player if you really did want to argue him into s tier i would be fine with that i still think he should be the first player in a tier uh, just because he also he's never been a top five or enter the top five running backs i believe he may have finished fifth in points per game one year i think he can finish as a top three running back this season not something he's done yet tough to rank him that high um but four I mean, I think he's going to have a phenomenal season. Uh, next up, we're going to have Saquon Barkley. Uh, nice that he finally uh, has the whole contract situation resolved. That's very good. Uh, great bounce back last season. Um, finished fifth in points per game last year um, after, you know, having some injuries the previous seasons. Um, the contract situation really was the only risk with him. Um, hoping the offense is going to be better. Adding in Darren Waller. Um, I mean, their wide receiver core just fell apart last season with all the injuries. They haven't fixed it in the sense that like they don't have like a true number one wide receiver, but now they have enough wide receivers, enough filling different roles. I know they have just like 17 slot wide receivers, but they have some that'll work more downfield. They have some that'll work intermediate. They really have that number one, I guess, in Darren Waller now. And so they don't have to have Saquon do everything. That's going to impact his touch totals, right? Because it's like before it was give him a billion touches because we have no one. Maybe the touches come down, but the efficiency goes up because defenses aren't just focusing on Saquon. They now have other people to worry about, especially if Hyatt can really get going downfield and just like, you know, not command a bunch of targets, but threaten downfield and force defenses to respect that. Well, that's going to open up things in the ground game. Everything kind of works together, right? So I think he's going to have a really good year. Um, very safe player with the receptions. Obviously, there's no one challenging him in the backfield. We're pretty sure the Giants are going to be a pretty decent offense again this season. So second player in eight tier, fifth running back. I think he makes for a really good pick. Another player in eight tier, Jonathan Taylor. Um, you know, murky situation right now, definitely a deteriorating situation in Indy. Um, kind of unfortunate what the running back market has come to, but I mean, they're not, they're not treating Jonathan Taylor very well, uh, in Indy right now. Um, hopefully that all gets resolved. I have to think it will, like they're going to be so bad, like so unbelievably terrible if they don't have Jonathan Taylor. And that's also going to impact Richardson development. Like you have to remember, they want to throw Richardson in. If it's not week one, it's going to be very early in the season. They want him to, you know, get a lot of opportunity this season to just, you know, give him, give him reps. They know they're not making playoffs. They're not doing anything. And so give him reps, develop him, right? Well, it'd be better to develop him if like you have Jonathan Taylor, right? Because he's going to help even the passing offense because defenses aren't you know, focused on the running backs if he's not there. And so he just makes the offense a little bit better. And that just kind of helps Richardson develop. If they have no ground game whatsoever and defenses aren't scared of the running backs and Richardson struggles to develop a little bit more, like that might hurt him long-term. And so I think they're going to work things out. Um, if they do, I mean, he had nearly 1,500 yards, 12 touchdowns as a rookie, nearly 2,200 yards and 20 touchdowns in year two. That is an ankle injury last season. He'll be good to go off of that. If he's out there, he's going to be an absolute stud. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously we have to watch that situation. Seventh running back is going to be Tony Pollard. Um, another one where it's watch, this, watch the situation, not from a contract standpoint, just from a signing standpoint. Um, we know Zeke is gone. Now, they now have Malik Davis, uh, Ronald Jones, Deuce Vaughn, Rico. I think it's Dowdle, but don't quote me on that. I think that's how he pronounce his last name. Uh, but point is not great behind him. He is obviously number one. They will use those running backs. They will mix them in. Um, they will not give him 100% of the snaps, 100% of the touches. That does not matter. Um, he's going to be an absolute stud. If they enter week one with the running back room they currently have, I might move him over Saquon and Jonathan Taylor. And I probably would. I just, in the back of my mind, I think there's still a chance that they sign someone, bring someone else in. Uh, and that would obviously hurt. But yeah, like if if they enter week one and Tony Pollard is the lead back and then their backups are, you know, suspended Ronald Jones, uh, a like 150 pound Deuce Vaughn and then Malik Davis, 
like, I'm going to be like, okay, well, they're probably giving him 20 plus touches a game. And if that happens, he's probably a top like three running back. And so I would still probably put him behind Nick Chubb, but he would be a phenomenal pick. I would be investing heavily in him right now, just in case that happens. Uh, next up, still in this tier, uh, is going to be Derrick Henry. Uh, he's turning 30 in January, so age is getting up there. He does have over 2,000 career touches. That's not amazing. Um, so slight concerns. Obviously, he's like a freak athlete. And so, you know, if, I don't know, some like scrub running back somehow got, you know, over 2,000 career touches. I don't really know how that would happen. But if someone did somehow do that, uh, you know, you'd expect them to break down more. But like, he's Derrick Henry, right? He's an absolute freak. Um, he's got double-digit touchdowns in five straight. One of those was an eight-game season. Like in eight games, he still had 10 touchdowns. Like he is a touchdown monster. Uh, he had just shy of 2,000 yards last season. He was third in points per game. We haven't really seen a huge breakdown. He's been slightly less efficient, but like he's still going to be really good this season. I would expect probably this season, probably one more year of really good production from Henry. And then maybe after that, we can start to be like, okay, like, you know, he'll be 30 all of next year, be turning 31 the next January. He'll have well over 2000 touches. Like then we'll start to really pump the brakes. Um, I think this is a good spot. Like if Derrick Henry was still first round pick, obviously it'd be a no-go. But he's what? Now the, the eighth running back in the rankings, that's that the age is coming in, right? The touches are coming in. They're being a factor there. That's why you're getting him at a discount. You can get him in the third round at times on a site like Underdog. That's good value. So I think he's a, a good pick in that range. I wouldn't say I go super heavy into him. Um, I definitely have him below average. So um, I draft him less than the public does. But if he falls, I would not be scared of the touches. He's still awesome. Um, but I do think they're going to try and limit it a little bit with Spears. I think they like Spears. And use Spears a little bit because I don't think his touch ceiling is as high as it was. Next up, another contract situation. Last player in A tier, Josh Jacobs. Um, as you know, week one approaches, if we're not getting this contract situation solved, maybe you could argue that Jacobs should be moved down into the B tier, down into tier three. Um, I would say right now, I still think he's gonna sign. It makes no sense from his perspective to not sign a contract, to not play this season, like holding out would cost him more than it would gain him in the future. The only chance is, is he doing it more to like, you know, protect running backs in the future, if that makes sense. Like if he's doing this for like future running backs to make a point, to try and get them a better contract situations, um, maybe like higher rookie contracts, maybe um, better for, um, you know, when they're doing the franchise tag, like make that actually go up and not down be the only position that's going down uh, if he wants to like solve the sort of issue of the running back market that's why he would hold out it wouldn't be personally because he'll lose far more than he'll gain by holding out personally um so i don't think that he will um but because it's a risk i think you move him down here um i would say if he were like to sign you know this afternoon after i'm recording this i would probably move him up right next to tony pollard maybe ahead of tony pollard um, just in this general range, it wouldn't be by a ton. Uh, but honestly, you're getting a good discount. Like on underdog right now, I've seen him fall into the late third round. That's great value. Just basically use that draft, assuming he signs, right? Assume that this is a draft where he signs, draft your team, assuming that. And if he doesn't listen, your team's probably not going to win. But if he does, you're getting him at like a round discount in the f like, you know, first three rounds. That's awesome. So you can take that risk on underdog. I understand in redraft league, if you're drafting right now, it's a little bit more risky because you don't have all of the drafts to kind of like even out that exposure to be like, I'd go overweight at like 13, 14%, you know, and a redraft league, you might only be playing two leagues. So you kind of have to make that call. Uh, but in that range, in that mid to late third round, I'd be taking a shot on it because I do think it's more likely he does sign. And if he does play, I mean, he was a running, running back champ last season. He's significantly better than all the backups. He'd be used heavily on offense. Like he's an awesome running back. So if he signs, he's going to be a really good deal where he's going. B tier. Ramondre Stevenson, first running back. Um, people definitely argue he should be an A tier. I've just thought for the whole offseason, I haven't been drafting him that much. You guys know I'm a Patriots fan. I would love to root for him. I'd love to be overweight. I just like hearing the team talk. It doesn't seem like they wanted ever for him to get as many touches as he had last season. They just had injuries. He was playing well. They kind of had to use him, but they would prefer to use him a little bit less and to trust some of the backups. Right now, they don't. They don't trust Pierre Strong. They don't trust Kevin Harris. And so they 
if they entered week one with what they have right now, it's the same thing with Tony Pollard. I probably would move Stevenson up into this A tier, probably into the same range as Barkley and Jonathan Taylor. I just believe more strongly, even than Tony Pollard, I believe very strongly that the Patriots are going to sign someone. Whether that's Zeke, whether that's Fournette, whether they bring someone else in we're not thinking of right now, whether they trade for someone, whether someone gets hut, cut and they bring them in, like some sort of situation is going to happen where the Patriots add a second running back that's going to decrease the value of Stevenson, and people aren't really taking that into account right now, and so I haven't been drafting him a whole lot. Again, I love the talent, uh, love his receiving upside, um, don't love the offense in general for New England this season, um, and so it's just too much risk. Like if I think they're going to sign someone, why would I pay his ADP right now? Next up, we've got Brees Hall. Um, definitely a risky pick. If he were, let's let's just say, if he had not suffered an ACL injury last season, he wins Rookie of the Year, most likely. Probably a lock to win Rookie of the Year. Um, and he's probably a top 10 pick in fantasy this season. So if you think he's 100% in Week 1, and then they don't end up signing Dalvin Cook, then you're getting significant value in where he consistently goes late third round on underdog and, and still on all the other sites. He'd be a really, really, really good pick. The problem is he's not going to practice for a few more weeks, which puts him into like mid-August for practicing, meaning he's probably not 100% in week one. And if they're trying to sign Dalvin Cook, it's maybe indicating something like that. They're saying it's not, but they're just saying things. They can say whatever they want. Um, if they sign Dalvin Cook, is a very clear indication and honestly, them even aggressively targeting him, it's a clear indication they would like to have someone else so that they can, you know, have Brees Hall start slow and honestly, maybe for the full season, be mixing in another back. Brees Hall will still be the 1A. Uh, there's no way, even if they sign Dalvin Cook, that Dalvin Cook's the one. Like, Brees Hall is better. He's just an awesome running back and he will be better this season. But I have not been drafting him a ton because I really thought that people would have him, uh, like, they, I thought they'd take him lower. I really did. Um, he's still risk coming off of this major injury. Um, I know the offense is going to be good and it's set up for running backs to succeed. I just, I can't at his current ADP. I need him to fall in drafts, which he does sometimes. And so, you know, if he falls again, similar to like Jacobs, Stevenson, Brees Hawley, all of them, when they fall into that late third, I love it. Take them. Uh, if they're going in like the early third, don't love it as much. After Brees Hall, someone that I do love a ton is where is he jameer there he is jameer gibbs um gonna be a featured weapon this season going to be an elite offense for detroit he has the upside to catch 75 80 balls this season score 10 12 14 touchdowns that's probably on the high end but the point is he could hit these numbers he could hit 75 receptions he could hit 14 touchdowns those are in his range of outcomes um he's behind ackler and mccaffrey who were that's like the mold of running back that he is, right? He could be in this tier next season because we look at him being like, well, he's got the carries. He's got the touchdowns. He's on the offense. He's got the receptions. He's got everything. Contributes in every area. So there's nothing lacking. You know, that's what's held Nick Chubb back a little bit from being a top three running back in the past. Um, it's something that's held other running backs to have a lot of receptions, but maybe not as many carries. Like he has the upside to do both of them. Um, I would just say, in year one, especially with Montgomery there, I think um, the carries are basically what holds him back from being an S tier. If he can prove that he can handle, you know, over 200 carries with these receptions, he will be a first round pick next season. But you don't have to take him there, right? Because he goes in like the fourth round on a ton of sites. Um, he's a great value. He is my third most rostered running back across 125 drafts so far this summer. I love drafting him. Ton of upside. Very confident in his production. I understand, again, he's a rookie, but again, my response is always, this is not their first year playing football. We have seen their entire collegiate career. Many people have scouted them in high school. We have seen these players play. We know who, which ones are good. Bijan is very good. Gibbs is very good. Next up, uh, someone who I also, like, I do think is very good, and I don't want people to think that, like, I don't. Um, it's just like I talk kind of negatively about many Steelers players, I feel like, this season. The pass catchers, because I don't think people understand how much they're going to run it. And then Najee, because I don't think people understand how much Warren's going to be involved. So that's kind of like my general thought as to why I've been down on many Steelers players this season. Um, I'm also not some like huge uh, Kenny Pickett fan. I don't think he's going to really ascend to me a great quarterback. Um, but I still like Najee. I still draft Najee. Um, he was ninth in points per game as a rookie. He dropped to 19th last season. Um, combination of them being really bad early in the season, um, the foot injury, like everything kind of played into 19th. 
Um, I don't think the foot injury played as much as people think it did. I think just during that time, they were bad. Like, they closed the season winning a ton of games. That's why he was so much more productive late in the season than early in the season. But if I think they're going to run the ball a ton, I think he's good in the receiving game. I think he's still a great talent. Like, sure, he's inefficient, but he's going to get a billion touches. He deserves to go in this general range. So when he falls, absolutely draft him. And if there's no other, like, wide receivers, like, let's say wide receiver went in a big run, you missed out on elite quarterbacks, um, you're not in love with the tight end in that range, don't be like, oh, I have to draft Najee. Like, he was a first-round pick last season for a reason. He could be a first-round pick next season. Uh, so I think discount, pretty good discount on him. Um, and, you know, if he has a down year like he had last year, it doesn't hurt you as much where he's going in drafts as it did when he was, you know, a late first round pick. Um, but again, if you were comparing him and Warren and you said you have to draft one of them at ADP every single time, I take Jalen Warren at his ADP just so much later in drafts. Um, less upside, obviously, for Jalen Warren, but I'd rather spend the late pick on Warren than the early pick on Najee. And as a similar thing, which I was ETN, uh, he was 24th in points per game last season. Um, there's been rumblings that he's improved in the passing game, that he's doing really well in that area. Um, that's nice. I I like Tank Bigsby more than the public does. Um, I guess it's kind of offset by I also like the Jaguars offense more than the public does. And so it's like you take ETN. It's like, well, I like Tank Bigsby more. So drop ETN. But then I like the Jaguars offense more. So raise ETN. So it's almost like kind of puts him close to his ADP. Um, I don't know. I just think people take him a little bit too early for how good I think Tank Bigsby is. And Tank can contribute in multiple areas. Tank can be used as a goal line back. Tank can be used in the receiving game. He can be used in any area of the game. And I think he's really good. And I don't think they want to give Travis Etienne a billion touches. They just didn't really have an option last season. There was no one else that they could give a lot of touches to. I think they want to bring his touches down a little bit. And while he'll be hyper efficient uh, and have plenty of touchdown upside because he's on a great offense, um, I don't know. I, I'm just a little hesitant. Again, I'd rather draft Tank Bigsby at his ADP than Etienne here. Joe Mixon. Final player in B tier, um, was eighth in points per game last season. So a lot of people would be like, why is he 15th here? Or roughly 15th. You can see on the screen, I'll put at the top uh, where he is. Uh, but yeah, what? Three, six, nine, 12, 15. There he is. Yeah, he's 15th. Um, he was eighth last season. And so it's like, well, why the big downgrade? If like, you know, we're not overly scared. Like, I think P Ryan's probably better than Chase Brown. So it's honestly, his backup's got a downgrade. Well, it was because he scored 53 fantasy points in week nine, right? If you give him 20 fantasy points in week nine, which is still a really good number, he would have been 15th in points per game last season. So he, he didn't contribute eighth in points per game to your team. He had one awesome week that you definitely won. Every other week, he was worth way less. He was worth less than 15th in points per game. So for most of the season, this is in general where he was valued at. Um, we probably should never expect another 53-point game from him again in his career. Um I'm not too worried about the Joe Burrow injury. I think he's going to be good to go in week one. Um, chance of re-injury is definitely there, um, but I'm not too concerned about that. Also, Chase Brown, I think he's talented. I think um, models like him uh, because of the athleticism. So, like, my model really likes him. Um, I don't think he's a big threat to steal, like, a consistent workload from Joe Mixon. I think they'll use him as a change of pace back uh, to spell Mixon at times um, to try and hit a home run play because he's very athletic again. Um, I don't I don't think Chase Brown has anything to really worry about for Mixon. He's not going to just completely take over those touches. C tier. This is when we start to get into the concerns, right? We start to look at these players and be like, okay, you know, we're not really concerned about anyone in S tier. McCaffrey, Eckler, Bijan, there are very little concerns with them. There are slight concerns with people in A tier. A few of them, it's like contract situations, uh, but like talent-wise, you know, they're great. Um, you know, opportunity-wise, they're going to have plenty of opportunity. B tier, we start to take a little bit more away from them. Do the Patriots sign someone? Is Brees Hall healthy? Gibbs still is a rookie, and we don't know, you know how many early down carries he's going to get. Like There are still things with these running backs. We get into C tier, and there are a lot more things, right? The things with Aaron Jones is, yeah, he's been great recently. Fourth, fourth, 14th, 11th in points per game since 2019. But now he's Jordan Love at quarterback, not Aaron Rodgers. How good is Jordan Love? How much does Jordan Love throw to running backs? How does this offense play without Aaron Rodgers? Do they shift kind of things around? And so because of so many question marks, not with talent, he's a great talent, but with so many question marks um, and for how early as he goes, I just don't love it. Like in this general range, I typically am like, well, there's some wide receivers that I'm 100% confident are really good talents on really good teams with great opportunity. Like why 
really take a chance on Aaron Jones. If you're taking a chance, you can wait a little bit until like D and E tier. Don't do it in the C tier, honestly, uh, for, for many of them. Um, one that I am willing to take a chance on um, is Dobbins, next player in this tier. Um, he goes later than Aaron Jones in most drafts because there's a lot of drafts where he falls. I wouldn't say like aggressively target J.K. Dobbins, but... There are many, many, many. Again, I've been in 125 drafts so far this offseason. Many drafts where you're just in the draft and the other 11 people in the draft don't want him, right? Sometimes you're in a draft, he goes at ADP, he, he gets taken a little bit early as a reach. But there are plenty of drafts you'll be in where people do not want him. They don't feel confident in, in like this you know, contract situation, uh, which isn't really a concern. Um, they don't feel confident that he's 100% coming off the injury. They maybe don't like the Ravens offense. Like, There's a lot of different things that people will point to. Um, I would just say for Dobbins, I'm not concerned about very many of them. Like for him to hold out would make no sense. I mean, I understand Jacobs, if he wants to do this for the running back market, like Dobbins, like you have to have a season like Jacobs had to have that sort of leverage. Jacobs is coming off, you know, leading the league in rushing. Dobbins is coming off a major knee injury and people question if he's healthy. Like that's not a situation where you hold out in, right? He needs to prove for a season that he can stay healthy. Uh, But if he does, man, I mean... 800 rushing yards, nine touchdowns on six yards per carry as a rookie, torn ACL, misses a season and a half, comes back, still not fully healthy, still 5.7 yards per carry in eight weeks. Uh, still, you know, a season long pace of well over a thousand yards. Like, if he stays healthy this season, he's going to have 1,100, 1,200 rushing yards. He's going to have double digit touchdowns. And he's going to pay off this ADP with potentially more uh, targets than he's had historically, just given the change in offense. So, in this tier, we have a lot of question marks. I still really like Dobbins. Uh, someone that I don't love drafting uh, that goes in this tier is Ken Walker. Um, so interesting situation with them right now. Ken Walker's got the groin injury. That seems relatively minor. Seems like they're just keeping him healthy. Then you've got Zach Charbonnet, their rookie, uh, first rookie they drafted. He's got the shoulder injury. That seems more major, but they still won't tell us much about that one. Uh, then you've got Kenny McIntosh, their other rookie that was drafted really, really late. Um, probably because it was 40 time, um, but that I've liked. You guys have heard me talk about him a lot. Just someone that I don't think should have gone as late in the draft as he did. A uh, really good receiving talent. The reason that I'm not all in on Ken Walker is Kenny McIntosh is a good running back. Uh, and for them to have, you know, him and Charbonnet are both better than Ken Walker in the receiving game. That doesn't give me a lot of confidence in Ken Walker's, you know, ability in the passing game to really provide um, a lot of value uh, to where he's going. But he's a great pure runner. Right, he had 1,050 rushing yards, nine touchdowns as a rookie. Like for as good of prospects as Charbonnet and McIntosh are, Ken Walker was also a very, very good prospect, and so he does still have a lot of upside. Uh, just kind of hopeful that he returns, right? That he comes practices soon. I think he will, but uh, Seattle's never been straightforward with us as far as injuries. They've never really told us the truth. Um, so who really knows when he's going to return? Uh, but yeah, I think in this general range is where I should go. I just rarely draft him because Ken Walker doesn't fall very much in drafts. Um, and he just goes too early for my liking. Again, Charbonnet is a great running back talent and better in the receiving game. And even if he's hurt, he'll come back at some point. And then McIntosh is also good in the receiving game, also playing really well in camp. After him, someone that I do like in the seats here, Damian Pierce. Um, he was awesome. As a rookie, 1,100 rushing yards uh, or 1,100 total yards, five touchdowns through only 13 weeks. Remember, he missed the final four games with injury. Um, he's going to be the 1A. Singletary is going to be the 1B. Um, depends really how you feel about CJ Stroud. Like if you think CJ Stroud's really good, the offense will be at least okay. They're not going to be a good offense, but they'll at least be okay. Um, Pierce will have some upside. It's tough saying he's a ton of upside because we just know that the touchdown upside is capped and we know Singletary historically like he can get that production in the red zone um you're not going to call him a huge red zone threat but like they've used Singletary in the past in the red zone um and there's been reports that he's been good in red zone drills so far this off season and so there's still a chance that like Damian Pierce ends up being a really good running back for the team but has like you know, 1,200 yards and six touchdowns and just can't really get over the edge uh, and so it's like a breakout but not you know, um, an amazing season. But that being said, they're still missing a lot of targets. They're missing missing a lot of touches for their running backs. He's a really good talent. I just think he's a very good pick no matter what build you had. If you want RB0 and you want to bet on Damian Pierce having 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns with like 40 receptions, 
that would be really good at ADP and it would really provide you value on that build. If you wanted to have him as like your last running back or last like early running back and like a robust RB build, your second running back, if you want kind of hero, like any sort of build, I think he makes sense for. And so I think he's just a really good pick. Um, again, I believe in talent. Uh, the only thing holding him back is the situation. Uh, Cam Akers, next player in the C tier. Um, again, just to reiterate, C tier is like just the, the tier that it's like these guys have upside. Like they're all either talented players or on good offense offenses, but there are concerns. I think Akers is a very talented player. I think the offense is really good. And if they give Cam Akers, you know, 250 touches, he's going to produce well. He's going to have a really good season. Um, the question is, will they? We thought there was a chance they would last season. And then they weirdly opened the year just like not using him. They benched him at times. And he's complaining about the workload. And then all of a sudden they flipped the script and they're like, no, let's actually feature you on offense. And then he played really well. And so it's like you'd think they'd go back to doing that. But you just don't know because they've done this in the past where they're like, yeah, he's going to be good. And then they don't use him at all. So risky pick, obviously. But if it works out, I mean, he's a really good player. Uh, if you want a full breakdown, I don't remember the three, but I'm pretty sure two of them were Cam Akers and J.K. Dobbins. Uh, like a full, full breakdown on those players. Uh, you can check the channel. I've got, a, I've got a full breakdown breaking them down. But again, I like Cam Akers. Uh, next up, Miles Sanders. Another one where it's like, okay. I think Miles Sanders is really good. And I'm pretty sure they're going to give him a lot of touches, especially in the receiving game. They talked about using him more in the receiving game. Uh, they gave him a really big contract in a season where no one can get a contract. Like, Barkley had to beg to get a little bit more guaranteed, but he didn't even get that much more. They're not paying Jonathan Taylor. They're not paying Josh Jacobs right now. Like, they're not paying J.K. Dobbins. These are really good running backs, too. Well, listen, the Panthers went out, and they were like, here's a bunch of money to Miles Sanders. And so they clearly value him pretty highly. Um, they wouldn't just do that for fun, right? No one's giving running backs any sort of money. And so um, I think they're going to use him a lot. Uh, the, the question is, will they, right? We thought that they were, um, we thought that the Eagles were going to use him more in the receiving game than they did last season. Maybe that's an issue more with the Eagles offense, not utilizing running backs in the receiving game. Not really an issue with the offense, just like a feature, a function of the offense. Um, but yeah, we've thought it in the past and then he's definitely busted. And then also how good are the Panthers going to be? I mean, we don't really know how good of an offense they're going to be. So, um, like him as well, uh, again, another one of these like quote unquote dead zone running backs. Um, but he definitely has a lot of upside. Um, I mean, look at the backfield though, Chuba, uh, Blackshear, Spencer Brown, who do you think is going to break out in that backfield? If you add in Miles Sanders, it's probably Miles Sanders. Uh, second to last, I believe it's the second to last player. No, third to last player in this year. Big tier for C tier, Alexander Madison. Um, I am lower on Madison than most. I think people will be surprised having him this low. Um, if he is featured, he will shatter this ADP and he has the upside to do that. But, um, I'm a little fearful that he won't. He's never been over 500 rushing yards, uh, never been over 230 receiving yards in a season. He's got 3.7 and 3.8 yards per carry the last two years. Um, there's no one else in the backfield right now. And so I think that's why people have a lot of confidence. They could still sign someone. Um, they could still use these backup running backs. Um, the rookie in Dwayne McBride, they still have Ty Chandler. Like maybe they use them more than people think. Um, but yeah, I just, I, it, it feels risky. I mean, of all of these players, it feels like Madison is the most risk. And yet ADP wise, there's a lot of sites where he's going very, very early. And a lot of leagues where people reach on him very early. I wouldn't want to do that. I would definitely want to only draft Alexander Madison. If he falls, I think there's a lot of risk factors with him. Someone I love drafting. That I also have a ton of. Even though I said that uh, Jameer Gibbs is my third highest rostered running back so far, I love Dave Montgomery. And I'm drafting him a ton too. Um, through four years, he's never had below 200 carries, never had below 25 receptions, never played fewer than 13 games. He's been dependable. They know they can trust him. They know they can get him carries. I think he's going to get a ton of carries. Gibbs will get a ton of receptions. And then they'll both still mix in uh, for like, like Montgomery will still have receptions and Gibbs will still have carries. This is the best backfield. This is the backfield you want running backs on in fantasy. They're going to be awesome. They have to be awesome because who else do they have? Jameson Williams suspended um, for the first six weeks. Um, we know that uh, Hawkinson is gone. We know that Chark is gone. Like they have a rookie tight end as their lead. Like they need these running backs to be productive in all areas of the game. And I think they are going to be. Final player in C tier is Rashad White. Um, very high upside. 
I would say the only, honestly, my only concern with Rashad White, or I guess I have two concerns. One's the offense. They're going to be dreadful. Um, they're not going to win many games. Maybe that helps him get some garbage time receptions, but it's going to hurt the touchdowns, going to hurt the rushing yards. You know, you'd still prefer me on a good offense. Um, we don't know uh, about Brady also. Like Brady was a, is a target monster for running backs, right? Brady just dumps the running backs a ton. And so maybe not having him is going to impact the receptions. We know he's still going to receiving it. Maybe that'll impact things. Um, but then also for the backfield, I think everyone's locked in saying, oh, well, they have no one, right? No one's going to compete with him. I think Sean Tucker could. Do I think he will? Probably not. But I think Sean Tucker at least has the upside to kind of compete with him in early downs. And if that happens, that really hurts, right? Now you're on a bad team. You're not featured. You're still losing some snaps on the ground. Maybe you lose some goal line touches. And so watch out for Sean Tucker. I would say if Sean Tucker got cut, uh, if it's clear that he's not going to be used very much, I'll like Rashad White a little bit more. I'm still fine drafting him, um, but that's my only concern is will Sean Tucker do anything? D tier, a uh, little bit more concerns with everyone into this tier. Uh, James Conner, they have the lowest win total. Arizona does, four and a half. Uh, they are heavy favorites to be a low wing scoring team. No one else is is less than like plus, plus 1,000. I think they're plus 600 right now. Like, you know, that's not saying they're definitely going to be. It's just like they're by far the most likely team to be the lowest scoring team in the league. Uh, not great for a touchdown dependent running back, especially one that's had you know injury concerns in the past. I have drafted him only when he falls. I will never reach on James Conner. Next up in this tier is Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, I'm more likely to draft Pacheco than I am James Conner. He's the most likely to be the lead running back on Kansas City. Uh, they want him to be the lead back when he is healthy. Uh, he is getting healthy right now, um, but they're still going to rotate. They're still going to use other running backs. They're never going to have that feature running back, at least given the room they have right now. They want to mix in Clyde. We'll see if that experiment ever works. We'll see how many touches he gets. Um, but Deneric Pierce has had a phenomenal camp. He will probably mix in. He will make the team. Um, he'll be using special teams to start, but like he could mix in down the stretch. That would hurt. They still have Jerk McKinnon, who's like 90 years old, but he could still mix in for receptions. That's hurt. It's like all these little things do hurt him and it gives him uh just a lower ceiling than you would think McKansas City running back. Um another player that you know haven't drafted a ton of haven't drafted much James Conner haven't drafted much Pacheco more now that his ADP because ADP was crazy to start the offseason more now that it's dropped starting to get a little bit haven't drafted a ton of uh Javonta Williams either um and it's just like I get the upside because I think he's a great talent. Um, I think that Sean Payton could improve this offense. I think they could be a lot better this season. I think they're going to run the ball a lot. That's going to help. Um, I'm just hesitant because I don't know how good he's going to be coming off this major knee injury. I don't know when he's going to be 100% healthy. And I do know they want to mix P. Ryan in. Like they're going to have Samaj P. Ryan and Javonta Williams kind of split these touches. I do think Williams will have more. But P. Ryan's a good running back, and if he ends up being productive, if he ends up being just like healthier, then if it's a 50-50 split, now we need Denver to be a good offense. And if they're not again this season, maybe it takes Sean Payton another year to really, really like, you know, make the difference for this team. Um, it'll hurt Williams. Uh, and, and again, it's just like a little bit of unknown. Um, maybe when we get the joint practices, we get into preseason, we can really see Williams. And if he looks healthy, I'll move him up. Um, we just don't know right now, and I'm not willing to invest like this high of a pick consistently on someone who I, I don't know is healthy. Someone I do like drafting, though, finally in this tier, is James Cook. Uh, my model loves him. My models are predicting a breakout for him this season. Uh, he's got awesome upside. If he can be used more in early downs, if he can be used more in the red zone, it remains to be seen if that will happen, but hopefully it will. Um, he's a great value on some sites. I mean, he goes around pick 90 on average, but some sites have him pretty late. Um, I think that's a great spot to get him. If you can get him around pick 90, um, it's not going to be one of your first few running backs. Great upside, especially in like full PPR leagues. You can rack up those receptions. And again, if he can get those goal line touches, he could be really, really good in fantasy. Next up in D tier is uh, DeAndre Swift. I've drafted almost none of him this offseason. He just goes a little bit too early for me and he doesn't fall very often. Um, he's been working as a pass catcher in camp. That's not good news, right? Because again, function of the offense, right? Eagles don't use running backs in the receiving game all that much. Um, all the Eagles running backs values come from red zone carries. And if they're only using him as a pass catcher, he's not having very many red zone carries. And so I don't see the upside. He definitely needs Penny to get hurt. And then he probably needs another injury for them to truly feature him on this offense. 
Um, I just don't see it. I don't see it with Swift this season. Uh, needs the injuries. I'm not willing to bet on that happening. After him, we have Delvin Cook. Uh, we will see where he signs. Right now, it's looking like the Jets could still be the Dolphins. Maybe a sleeper team comes out and signs him. Um, Miami's definitely the better landing spot for him on fantasy. Um, just goes a little bit too early for me right now on most sites. Average ADP is 70th, but he's 93rd on underdogs. So underdogs don't want to be more likely to draft him in when he falls to like pick 100, maybe a little bit past there. That's where I'd want him. Um, average of 65th on the other four major platforms. I don't love that. I don't think that's amazing value. So I'd need him to fall. Um, also, you can see all of these. So I keep mentioning the major platforms ADP. It's completely free on my website. You go to the website, you the ADP tab. You can track players ADP over time. Then you can also track among the different sites, among ESPN, Yahoo, Sleeper, NFL, um, Underdog, like you look at all of them, you can see ADP for every player on those sites and you can see who's the best and worst value on different sites. I would just do that before you draft, right? You're doing an ESPN draft, go on there, select who are the best picks on ESPN and it'll tell you again, 100% free. Um, but yeah, um, I just think on most of the major platforms, it goes a little bit too early for me. Um, he's he's going to be a backup wherever he signs. Um, maybe not Miami, but especially if he signs in New York. Brees Hall is the number one. Brees Hall is really, really good. That's going to cap his upside. I think people are drafting him a little bit too early. Um, last player in the D tier is Alvin Kamara. This one will be contingent on the suspension. Is it four games or less? Um, right now, I'm expecting four games. That's where his ranking is. If it's two games, he'll bump up. Six games, it'll bump down. Um, I struggled to move him higher than this just because like, I think Kendra Miller is a good talent. I think they're going to use him. And I think Jamal Williams is pretty good and they're going to use him as well. And like, I'm already over projecting this backfield because if I split it amongst all three in no situation, can I get any of them even close to their ADPs? Um, we're finally getting Jamal Williams and Kendra Miller falling in ADP. So maybe I can start to get some of them, but I've been drafting Kamara because it's like, well, I can only really draft one of these guys because two are probably going to disappoint this season. Um, but now Kamara is going even higher in ADP, so I really can't draft much of him anymore. So in redraft league, I think he's fine, but this is where I would kind of take him. And typically, honestly, given his now like new ADP in redraft leagues, he starts to come off the board earlier and earlier. And then we'll just see. If it's two games, we'll move him up, but solo ADP. His ADP is going to skyrocket. It's only two games. E tier. Um, wouldn't say I've gotten a ton of the players in E tier. Starts off with AJ Dillon, who... I don't even remember drafting. I mean, 125 drafts, I might have 2% A.J. Dillon, which is probably too low, but it's the same thing with Aaron Jones. It's like, I don't know how good Jordan Love's going to be, but I don't think it's going to be amazing. I don't know how good the offense is going to be, but I don't think it's going to be great. I don't know how much they're going to throw with running backs, but it's probably less than they were throwing to with Aaron Rodgers. And so it's like, we'll see in joint practices, we'll see in the preseason. I don't know. I just don't believe in the running backs this season on the Packers, so I don't really want to invest heavily in them. If they weren't amazing with Rodgers, are they going to be now amazing with Jordan Love? Probably not. Um, I do get some Gibson um, more when he falls, um, and more a little bit recently that they've kind of hyped up his potential role in the receiving game. Um, I definitely like him way more than Brian Robinson, um, and his ADP is actually later than Brian Robinson. Uh, it's just, it's not an elite offense. I know that. It's not going to have elite quarterback play, but... If he can kind of get that early down role, at least a little bit more in early downs, if they're going to use him as the passing down back, um, then that's like obviously very good news for his fantasy production. Um, but again, it's, it's really only when he falls. I'm not in love with him this season. Uh, Rashad Penny, I should draft more of because if my stance is he's the most likely to be the lead back, most likely to get goal line work, but highly efficient when healthy. Only issue with him is health. Can he stay healthy? He's trimmed down and so he's got a better chance of staying healthy. And if all the value for Eagles running backs comes in the red zone, with red zone carries, like, why would I not be drafting him? Like, why would I not be drafting him more? So I think I need to move him up, honestly. Maybe I will end up moving him closer to this Alvin Kamara range. Um, if we get any sort of report being like, yeah, he's definitely the lead back, I will move him up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's obviously the risk is he's literally never stayed healthy in his career. So he's, you know, unlikely to do so this season. But again, if he trimmed down... If he's trying to stay healthy that way, get a little bit less weight, um, if they're not going to overload him with touches, but he's going to be highly efficient, I mean, he could be a really good pick in this range. A lot of upside for him. Final running back, or final two running backs, I guess, is Samaj P. Ryan and Brian Robinson. As you heard, I already went over Brian Robinson. 
it's just not for me. Um, P. Ryan, I understand the take for P. Ryan. Um, I don't draft a lot of him, but I would say, you know, among this East here, I've probably drafted the most Samaj P. Ryan because Denver is going to run the ball a lot. Um, I know that P. Ryan's the number two, but I don't know how healthy Williams is. And I know that Sean Payton really wants to utilize two running backs. And so I think P. Ryan can have a good season. It's just the upside for, for both Williams and P. Ryan. When they're both healthy, neither one of them has really winning upside. They, they really need the other one to get injured. And then Brian Robinson, um, you know, given the chance last season, given a ton of chances last season, was highly inefficient, never really even had a good game. Um, it's They've said he's improved in the receiving game, which would be a positive because he was used zero in the receiving game last season. So he needs that. But they said the same thing about Gibson. Like they've said they're going to use Gibson more in the receiving game. So what, they've given all their running backs like a 10% target share? Like no. So I don't think it's really true that he's going to be used more in the receiving game. Uh, and my model really hates the efficiency last season. Obviously, I mean, we know what happened to him last season. There's a reason he was highly efficient, just given uh, what occurred. And so he's talked about how that also like held him back last year, just like not ever really being 100% back to where he was before. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully we do see. Um, he is one that I really do hope in the preseason, you know, later in camp, you know, when we get into like mid-late August, he really is playing really well. And they're like, okay, he looks more explosive this season um, until we hear that. I'm not really going to be drafting much of him. So those are the top 36 running backs broken down by tiers, at least for half PPR scoring. If you want to see the rankings for all scoring formats, you want to see the same thing, but for all different positions, you can see that on my website, thefinishfootballadvice.com. And we also have a deal going on for you guys right now. If you want to get access to these rankings for cheaper, all you have to do is sign up for your first underdog account today using promo code FFA and make a minimum $10 deposit. That is it. It will not only give you the underdog rankings, but all other rankings as well and access to the custom rankings. So if you're in a weird scoring format league, I have custom rankings where you can input those scoring formats, input the league size. You can change players. You can boost their value, decrease their value. You can say, I want running backs early, quarterbacks early. You can do all that stuff and it'll adjust custom rankings for you. And you can cross players off as they're drafted add them to your team, do all that sort of thing. Again, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. If you want access to that, use promo code FFA when you sign up for your first underdog account today. That'll get you access to all that for free. So I'll be back tomorrow with a player breakdown video, Friday with the top five video, and then Saturday to go over the latest ADP changes over the last two weeks. And then my friends, is in this one. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting the like button, how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.